Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are back here at uh, Cape Canaveral inside the VAB taking a look at the uh, RA8F H1. This is the latest variant of our old uh, RA8 rocket, the one that we uh, test flew uh, just a couple episodes ago. Anyway, we're about uh, 60 days from a Jupiter window, and even though we don't have the comms stuff necessary to uh, communicate that far, I thought it couldn't hurt just to try to throw something out that way and uh, see what we can't make happen. Uh, this is our old MapSat probe, which I guess we'll be kind of retooling a little bit to try to fit the profile. Um, actually, maybe we should just go ahead and switch out this core entirely and upgrade to the Ranger Block 1. Oop, I selected the wrong thing. Nope. Oh boy. Okay. Let's do this. There we go. Alright. Now, we have Ranger Block 1 core. So, uh, weight is obviously a serious issue, as is fuel consumption and power, because solar panels will not work very well that far away, uh, but we don't really have a uh, any better option to speak of. So we're going to strap a hydrazine tank here to the top, doop doop, just like that. We can thin that up. We certainly don't need a whole lot. Like I said, weight is definitely a issue. Um, we'll probably be going just with these quads. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, to do. do. So I'm thinking about these extendables, although that may not be S.02.007. These are the, okay, these are much, much smaller and don't really want to cooperate with much. So let's, nope, nope, that's the one. All right. Hmm, I think we can get away with three of them just because it kind of matches the architecture. I'm hoping, I guess we'll find out uh, exactly how wrong I'm going to be. We're going to go with these solar panels, but because while they are heavier, they deliver significantly more power. And we're going to need a lot of them. Although that's going to interfere with the... Yeah, those three are going to, well, they would if this were somewhat realistic, but all right, we need to upgrade our engines. Uh, we're going to switch them out to Aerozine. Yeah, I guess we'll go with Aerozine 50 and Nitrogen Tetroxide. Got those ranked up at a level three, so now we can fuel our tank here, which puts us above the avionics threshold. So we need way less fuel because we've got a lot of stuff to add to this still. Set the height if okay. Seventy-five million, that one's a joke. One gigameter. I've kind of worked myself into a hole here. with uh, all of these solar panels. So maybe we'll, maybe we will drop down to three. I know we need at least one to support. No, let's do four. Uh, what was that one where you guys were at an angle? I liked that, that angle worked. All right, let's do four. And then we're gonna sneak on two of these. God, I really don't like that. I don't like that at all. I hate rush building things. I don't have a whole lot of time before I have to jet off and go do adult responsibility kind of things, and that just does not look right to me at all. I kind of hate it. Oh, 
And that's just awkward. And that's just going to be tragic. puts us over our limit. Yeah, those are totally not worth it, unfortunately. Yep. It's always the last one you find, right? Okay. Awkward, but a little bit more manageable. And then so we'll again get down to two of these. They're gonna hit. Okay, that I can live with. Let's get some science on this bad boy. Magnetometer puts us over the limit, really? Wow. Damn you, wait. Restrictions, fine. That gives us more of a mounting surface anyway. Science. We only need one of these. One thermometer. Geiger. One orbital perturbation. And I am forgetting the micrometeorite detector. We're just going to have to sneak that little guy on there and offset him with this short range antenna. There we go. need to reset these guys, don't I? Yeah, Arizine. Upgrade. Upgraded, good. Alright. Now we're probably going to need a kick stage. Come down here to structural and give ourselves a decoupler. Oh, wait a minute. We might not be maxed out. So let's, well, let's paint that something nice, like gold foil. For no reason. Alright, and Upgrade that too. Alright, still not maxed out. That's good. Length? Now we are. There's the limit. Okay. Now we add our decoupler. And we're going to need a control core. I guess we're going to go with the Agena again. And probably the best engine for this, we want something hypergolic because it's going to be in space for a good long time. The obvious candidate here is the Asteris, infinite uh, ignitions. And uh, <clears throat> uses storable propellants. Conveniently also uses Arizine 50 and nitrogen tetroxide. And wow, like, which uh, we can get thrusters that will do the same so we can actually lock these tanks so as to not use our own aerozine we will need an independent power source which we will space out around from the other ones so that they're not interfering with each other good We'll need some control thrusters spaced out from the solar panel so as to not interfere. Those will provide ullage and everything else. So far, so good. 
I'm just gonna go a simple gray scale on that one. Alright, now let's set these bad boys up for Aerozine 50 and 204. Upgrade. Good, good. Alright, and we still have close to 4,000 meters per second in this stage. That's excellent. Let's set up our action groups. Boot one for boot. Toggle these panels. Extend those panels because they lock. Toggle these antennas. And action group 10, our radio in. Which will log magnetometer and all these other nice things. Record, record, log. that all of them? Yeah, we gotta get avionics. Or I mean telemetry. Analyze telemetry. Okay. That's that part. So, well, certainly 4,000 is not enough to do our uh, Julian transfer. The whole transfer is about 6,500 meters per second. Now look at our total delta V. 14309. Uh, these two stages here, with a little bit of help from this guy, will be more than enough to get into orbit, I'm hoping. Hmm. Let's take a look at those numbers again, because that's, you know, about seven. So we'll need a thousand meters per second from there just to hit orbit. So we'll say that's an extra 23. Yeah, that's kind of right on the line. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, we're gonna have to give it a try. I don't exactly know where I could cut more weight from this thing. Although solar panels and science experiments are certainly the obvious choice. Hmm. This is a tough call. Well, I don't know if it's going to work, but I think I'm going to have to try. Honestly, I, you know, maybe, maybe not. But I guess we'll see, really. So let's bring this up to a launch height. Not quite. There we go. 2 minutes 40 seconds is the runtime on these. They have a rated burn time of 2 minutes 45. So we can actually get uh, we can get 5 more seconds in there. Why is that not helping? Maybe it's just not recalculating yet. It doesn't really seem to be doing much there either. No, we're still at 2 minutes 40. Doesn't seem to be actually adjusting anything. I wonder if KSB is having a heart attack. Uh oh. Alright, well, let's rename it. <laughs> Jewel probe. I'm still in original KSP mood. Save. That does in fact work. We'll just go ahead and add it to the build list as it is. And I'm going to try to sort out what's uh, wrong with our things here. Okay, well that worked. That's kind of gamey, but Nothing else is really working, so I don't really know what to do. Scrap the other one. Add it to the build list. Alright, well, sorry this episode's been kind of uh, not a whole lot going on, but next time we're going to probably launch this sucker. We're going to have to rush build the hell out of it. The window's in 60 days, plus 3 or 4 days to roll it out, so we're going to have to do some rushing. 
But uh, other than that, you can look forward to this in the next episode. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. I will see all of you tomorrow.